Welcome to the new video on the zeta function. In this video we will talk about an alternative way in deducing the Euler product representation of the Euler Riemann zeta function. Okay, in the video before we somehow derived it by using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. In this video it's a little bit easier and we will use an idea which is pretty similar to the seed of Aristoteles. Okay, I will maybe explain it in a, another video, but you will understand how it actually works. So let's have a look at the thing we want to derive. We want to derive that the zeta function, which was defined as the sum of um, the reciprocal integer numbers, okay, and with a power of s. Now, using the Euler product representation, one could use this and write. This, the same zeta function is a product of 1 over 1 minus p to the minus s and then sum or not sum but take the product over all primes okay? actually at this point I'm not intending to say that there are infinitely many primes so let's do something okay? how does this work in order to understand the step, these steps which uh, are pretty easy actually we want to first introduce a step in which we want to take this definition of the zeta function and divide this by 1 over 2 to the s. Okay? What will happen then is we can take the 2 to the s into the sum and then you have 1 over 2 multiplied with n over s. Okay? This is what we are doing. And actually you will see that these are all the multiples of 2, okay, we have 2, 4, 6, and so forth, 8, 10, and so forth. And now we take these equations because they actually hold, they are true, they are true. What we are doing is we are taking the difference of both of these equations. So I'm taking this minus the left hand side and this minus this, okay. So this is what we get. We get zeta of s minus zeta of s multiplied with 1 over 2 to the s. This is just this um, expression. Now on the right hand side we have uh, the sum of all integer reciprocals time or to the power of s. And we subtract from this sum all the even numbers. Okay. So one could write it in this manner and say uh, the so I just took on the left hand side I took the zeta s and factored it out so I have 1 minus 1 over s and if you actually look at this stuff it looks pretty similar to that okay 1 minus and uh, if you would rewrite this instead of using 1 over 2 to the s you could write this 2 to the minus s so it somehow smells like we are getting closer to the Euler product representation. Okay, now on the right hand side, I use a new kind of notation. I say I take the sum from one to infinity, but um, with a condi condition that the numbers n are not odd numbers because we subtracted them. Okay, so and not odd, I mean even numbers. So no multiples of two should appear here in the denominator. Now you might say okay good we have this but this stuff is a lot more so what we have to do is we take this expression and now again divide it with something or better multiply it with 1 over 3 to the s let's do that and see what happens okay so we have zeta uh, open the bracket 1 minus this is the stuff that we had before we divide with 1 over s and now here we have a new thing appearing. We have this product of 1 over n to the s over 1 uh, to the 3 to the s. Now we can take 3 and n, add them together. So actually what we get is are the multiples of 3 here. Okay. Again, we subtract this. Uh, from this, we subtract the lower equation. And now again I go here we see zeta times 1 minus 1 over s 2 to the s this is um, a part in both 
factor so we can factor this out and we get 1 minus 1 over 3 Vs okay because you can imagine here 1 and then we have 1 minus uh, 1 to the 3 to the s equals now this sum minus this and actually if you look at this what we now have is we are taking the sum of all the uh, reciprocal integer powers of all the odd numbers and subtract all the numbers that are multiples of 3 okay so we could easily write this down as again such a su uh, sum but now we also introduce n unequals 3k okay and have this now well, this is looking interesting, okay? If you remember, the product formula of Euler was this, the first prime times the second prime. Now, we would uh, suspect that the next part would be 1 minus 1 over 5 to the s. And actually, if you do that, you will... So, we are repeating all these steps that we are doing. And here, we get, the, we get a list of all the multiples of the prime numbers, which says that in the end we will only be left with one number okay which is not a multiple of any prime number there is only one number that is able to do that and this is the one okay so on the right hand side we are having one because we took out all the multiples of prime numbers so two four six and then we were at three and then we took out nine and so forth we took all the prime multiples out of it giving us a very interesting thing so that only one is left because it's the only number which is not a product of primes it's only one okay now uh, it's easy to see what we have to do we have this product and we just have to divide one over this stuff again okay? we getting what we actually got is we got the Euler representation okay I'm just writing this as now as a product over all primes 1 this is this one over 1 minus p to the minus s because actually you could rewrite this as 2 minus s 3 minus s 5 minus s and so forth okay so we prove this in another way with uh, so our main idea was we took the zeta function multiplied it uh, with the reciprocal power of the first prime so 1 over 2 to the s then we subtracted saw that we would get a sum that only had odd numbers um, for n and then so forth we took out all the multiples of prime numbers giving us in the end only one and then we divided this and we got the Euler product representation actually there was a second proof of the Euler product representation and uh, in the next videos, we will go ahead and uh, look what is the relationship between the zeta function and the prime zeta function. You might not understand what the prime zeta function is yet, but actually I can tell you, it's instead of taking um, this n to be any integer, you only allow prime numbers, then you have the prime zeta function. And we, will, we want to see what's the relationship of the zeta function to that strange looking function okay and if you like my videos please subscribe and also comment or give thumbs up what you like just um, if you have questions feel free to ask I'm here to try to help you to understand it because if you don't understand these steps which we are doing now then you might have problems later on even if you can uh, if you know that result you might be able to, to solve all the the upcoming problems that we will look at Okay, so that's it, and this concludes the lecture, okay, see you guys.